The purpose of this video is to consider the reversal of an impairment loss. Before going into that, it's perhaps important to consider the concept of unwinding of discount. To explain this phenomena of unwinding of discount, consider the following present value calculation illustrated on the timeline. The basic functioning of a present value calculation is that you take a time value in the future and you discount that back to the present value. Effectively what you are doing is you are eliminating the effect of interest for every time period between those two points in time. A consequence of this then is, is if you move from your present value one time period forward, the amount will increase. Move another time period forward and the amount will increase. What causes this increase is the interest for the time period that has now elapsed. It therefore makes sense that your present value at future points in time will increase in value each time interest is added until ultimately returning to your future value. So now taking this back to IS36, what we are looking at is a value and use calculation here. Value and use calculations, remember, is where you take future cash flows and you discount them back to a present value. So if you are in year one, you would have in this example taken the future value, discounted it back to the present value. If you now go into year two, that future value can be discounted again, but for one period less. And based what I've just explained with the present value increasing from time period to time period, the present value in the second time period will now be higher than the present value in the first time period. And the reason for this will be the additional finance costs for the time period that has elapsed already. So no other variable has changed in our calculation of value and use other than the fact that time has elapsed one period further on. This is known as the unwinding of discounts and this cannot lead to a change in the impairment loss or a recovery thereof because none of the estimates used in the calculation has changed. The discount rates has remained the same, the cash flows have remained the same. All that has changed is the point in time has moved. Let's consider this issue now in a practical example. In the given information it says DWE Limited owns an asset with a carrying amount of 2.1 million Rand at 31 December 20x1. Remember impairment is calculated or tested for at the end of the reporting period. Depreciation etc. will already have been accounted for and is now given to us carrying amount 2.1 million. Then it says significant adverse changes took place in the market for the products produced by this asset requiring an impairment test to be done. In essence, this is your indication that you need to go and test for impairment. When you're testing for impairment, you're looking for a recoverable amount. The recoverable amount being the higher of your value in use or your fair value less costs to sell. Now in this case, they've said to you, Make the assumption that the fair value, less cost of disposal, is lower than the value in use. In other words, you must use the value in use. So, in focusing on the future cash flows now for value in use, a timeline again will just help you understand what we're doing, because you will now start with all these future cash flows that are given to you as the budgeted information. And these future cash flows now need to be discounted back to a present value. Using the amounts given in the information now to calculate your value in use, you will get an answer of 1826000. This you can now compare to your carrying amount that was given to you, which is 2.1 million. The difference of 274,000 can now be journalized in your general journal to account for the impairment loss for the period. The calculation of the value in use can be done manually or it can preferably be done with the use of your financial calculator, in which case you'll make use of the cash flow function on your financial calculator. 
The reason for this is that the payments for every period that you're doing the calculation are not the same, so it'll be inappropriate to use the payment button on your financial calculator. What is important though when you use the cash flow function is that the cash flow function needs to be told that you're trying to calculate the present value and you use a zero to inform it that the first day's value is undetermined. If you begin by putting in your 200,000 as your first cash flow, it will read this as a day one value and your calculations will be incorrect. Moving ahead in time now to the next reporting period, you'll see that your calculation of value and use is now only based on four cash flows and not five. Looking at the variables entered into this calculation, you will note that none of these variables have changed. The only thing that has happened is one period in time has now elapsed. The value in use as a result of this calculation now with only the four cash flows in is now 1991. This is compared to the previous periods 1826. You may be inclined to view this as an increase in the recoverable amount and want to reverse an impairment or part of the impairment from the previous reporting period. You should however remember though that all that has happened is merely the passage of time has passed for one period and the interest for that period has now been accumulated to increase our balance. There is therefore in this case no reversal of any impairment loss as it is merely the unwinding of discount. Looking at an example now for the second year, but there has been a change in the variables. In this case, they have shown you that the cash flows have actually been revised from those previously considered in the budgets. A new value in use is calculated and preferably again using your cash flow function on your financial calculator and a value in use is now calculated again. This value in use is now higher than that previously reported. So, our value and use you have now calculated. You now need to compare that to the carrying amount. This carrying amount has been calculated for you, and it reflects the carrying amount given in the given information, as well as the impairment loss in the first period, and depreciation on the revised carrying amount in the subsequent period, resulting in your carrying amount of 1461 million that you then are comparing to your recoverable amount calculated at the end of the second period. Given that your recoverable amount is now higher than your carrying amount and estimates have changed and it's not merely the unwinding of discount, a reversal now would be possible. You are in your general ledger currently reporting 1461 and this will need to be increased. The recoverable amount at the moment being over 2 million. However, there is a limitation to this reversal. You need to go and consider what your carrying amount in your ledger would have been without any previous impairment losses. Your depreciation will be based on the carrying amount excluding impairment losses getting you to 1.68 million. Your impairment loss then from your existing carrying amount can only effectively restore the carrying amount that would have been the case without any impairment. This will be true for the revaluation model as well.